Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with a special guest, Groucho Marx, presented by Lucky Strike. your shirts a little. <laughs> well, for heaven's sakes, watch it next time. Yes, sir. Say, I see you opened that box they sent over here from the wardrobe department. Yeah, they sent me a lot of costumes over to try on, but don't bother hanging them up. I, I picked one out. <laughs> the boss sure is excited about that costume party Mr. Daryl Zanuck's giving. I'll never forget the last time he went to a masquerade party. He disguised himself as a waiter. He fooled all the people and kept all the tips. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to help you with your costume? No, no, I've got it on. I'm all, I'll be right out. Okay. Where's the mail? Over here on the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? I don't know. What are you supposed to be? <laughs> Little boy blue, of course. If I were you, I wouldn't wear that costume. Why not? Your legs are too skinny. They are not. Look at look at that muscle. Where? Right there. That's your kneecap. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh well. Oh, Rochester, I wish you'd talk to the, to the postman and tell him about my mail always being late. Late? Yeah. <laughs> Look at here. here. Here's the letter I got notifying me that my option was picked up. Well, that's the one you've been waiting for. But this is from Jell-O. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it being that late. Say, here's a costume you might like to wear. A cowboy outfit. Okay. Here's the hat. Right. Here's the shirt. Uh huh. Now for the pants. Oh, here they are. Here's the pants. belong to Gary Cooper. <laughs> you think so? Yup. <laughs> hey, Rochester, look what it says here in the television sheet in the paper. It says, Bob Hope was sensational at the Academy Awards. He was never funnier, which only proves once again that Hope is the best master of ceremonies and the greatest comedian. Hmm. Why don't they print news instead of opinions? <laughs> <laughs> See what's on the television here. It says, the plot of this week's General Electric Theater will deal with a lady lecturer and her high-pressure agent. The jackpot on Groucho Marx's You Bet Your Life program tonight will be $3,000. Robert Montgomery will... $3,000? You hear what I said? Uh -huh. Imagine giving $3,000 just for for answering one question. Gosh, I, you know, I, I'd like to go over there and, and get on Groucho Marx's program for tonight. But, but boss, he'll recognize you. And besides, they don't use actors on that show. Yeah. But look, Rochester, I can disguise myself so even Groucho won't recognize me. Yeah, but what about the costume party? I'd rather go on Groucho Marx's show. <laughs> anyway, I... You know, Mr. Mr. Zanuck won't miss me at his party. No, especially since you weren't invited. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck, boss. And since this is my night off, I'll just turn your bed down now, and I think I'll leave early. Okay. Gee, three thousand dollars. Maybe I can win it. I ought to get some suit here that would fit, maybe. This might be it. Say, boss, do you think you're doing the right thing? Oh, sure, sure. He'll never recognize me. I think I'll be. <laughs> sleeping on a bank. <laughs> Look, get shaken up a little bit and make room for $3,000. I'm going to change my clothes. I'll see you later. This makeup that we're wearing we hope will look familiar. We couldn't feel much sillier. It's really quite bizarre. They said put on some glasses a mustache and black eyebrows And though you look like eyebrows They'll still know who you are And so with no concession And not the least expression We offer this impression, you see The man whom we are playing Is one who's always paying He's one who's always saying Meet Groucho Hey, that's me That's me That's me That's me Hooray for our friend Groucho, his ad-libs are the quickest, his repartee the slickest of anywhere we know. When Groucho meets Jack Benny, will Benny bet a penny that he can answer any of the questions on the show? Will Groucho meet his master, will Benny be the faster? It might end in disaster, who knows? We'll bet that Groucho hollers if Benny really collars the whole three thousand dollars. My, how the tension grows. And now it's time to light up a better tasting Lucky, that cleaner, fresher Lucky, that smoother Lucky Strike. You simply cannot measure that deep down smoking pleasure. You say that it's a treasure. It's lucky that you like. It's light up time all over, from Timbuktu to Dover. With luckies we're in clover, you see. And just to keep you posted, for better taste they're toasted. And that is why we post it. And always say it's lucky strike for me. Welcome. Now tell me, Miss Johnson, uh, uh, how old are you? Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, are you engaged or married no, or anything? No, sir. Oh, uh, well, uh, do you have a boyfriend? No, sir. Well, do you have a DeSoto? No. Well, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and tell him Groucho sent you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but you don't send me. <laughs> well, tell me, sailor, how come you have no decorations or ribbons? Well, sir, I, I just enlisted in the Navy, and I've never been on a battleship. I've you, never seen action. You've got a lot to learn, sailor. <laughs> when sailors see action, they're not on a battleship, they're on shore leave. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about it. In a few years, you'll probably have your whole chest covered with medals. Oh, I don't think so, sir. I don't think so either. I just threw that in in case your girlfriend <laughs> I didn't want to embarrass you. Well, you needn't have bothered. I don't have a girlfriend. You haven't got a girlfriend? No, sir. Well, take off that uniform. You can get in trouble impersonating a sailor. <laughs> Come to think of it, if you take off that uniform here, we'll all be in trouble. <laughs> well, you don't have a girlfriend? No, sir. Well, As a matter of fact, I haven't even kissed a girl. Well, with Miss Johnson's permission, uh, we're going to remedy that. Would you like to kiss Miss Johnson here? Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. I... Well, go ahead, sailor. There's a first time for everything. Go on, kiss her. <laughs> mm. 
aja. You know, this is one of the most interesting books I've ever read. Pardon me just a minute, I hate to interrupt this, but uh, have you read this book? No, sir. Well, hold it, I'll be right back. <laughs> Now that we've all seen action, let's have a little action on the show. Here. <laughs> well, uh, the category you selected is geography, and now uh, you know the rules. How much you want to bet on your first question? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Okay, here we go for thirty dollars. New York is known as the Empire State. What is Texas known as? The Lone Star State. That's right. You now have a hundred and thirty dollars. Now, what question will you try next? How about fifty? Fifty dollars. What was the last state admitted to the Union? Arizona. Right again. You now have $180. Now what question would you try? $60. $60. Under what new name is the country of Persia now known? Iran. That gives you $240. Now here's your last chance to beat the other couples. What will you select? We'll try the hardest one, the $100 one. $100? Okay. What was the name of the governor of New York who purchased the island of Manhattan from the Indians for $24? Oh, that was Peter. Hmm. Peter Stevenson. I'm sorry, it was Peter Minuet, but you have $120, and it was nice meeting you. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Uh, uh, the second couple is now leading with $120, and the secret word is telephone. If any of our contestants say the word telephone, they'll divide $100. For our next couple, we selected a doctor and a musician. Uh, will you come in, please? <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> What's your specialty, Doctor? I'm the musician. <laughs> and you must be the doctor, because the other thing standing here is a microphone. <laughs> yes, I'm the doctor. I'm a... I'm a psychiatrist. Say, your face looks familiar. Haven't we met before? I don't think so, Groucho. <laughs> and uh, what is your name, miss? No, this is the lady. Oh, I see. <laughs> Either I'll have to get my glasses fixed, or you'll have to do your hair differently. <laughs> I don't think he's kidding. Huh? Well, what is your name? Uh, Dr. Jeanette Iman. I'm a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Well, if I knew you were coming, I'd have built a couch. <laughs> now, getting on to you, what is your name, sir? Uh, Forsythe. Ronald Forsythe. Ronald, huh? It was Rodney during rehearsal. <laughs> Certainly a cheap way of sucking around Coleman. Now, are you a musician? <laughs> You're a musician, Mr. Forsythe? Yes, sir. I'm with the uh, Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh. I w I'm the first violinist there. You could have been the first violinist, period. <laughs> like he just escaped from Phil Spatoni's group. <laughs> Where were you born, Rod? You don't mind if I call you Rod, huh? No, no, no. Instead of Ron. I was born in Chitlin Switch, Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi, eh? Well, uh, what happened to your accent? Oh, well, nothing. You, you all just didn't notice it. <laughs> Show enough. <laughs> well, okay, now I think we better get started and play You Bet Your Life. Now, the secret word is a very familiar object, and it's something found around the house. Well, what happens if I, if I guess the secret word? Well, you get $100, which you two divide. Divide? <laughs> well, of course. If she says the secret word, she'll divide it with you. Oh, well, I wasn't arguing about that part of it. <laughs> Not only is your face familiar, but so is your philosophy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Forsythe, uh, Rod, but the rules say you have to divide it. Oh, Rod, well, Say the secret word, which is something found around the house. The duck will come down and pay you $100. Something around the house? Yes. Where's the duck? The, the duck? <laughs> well, where would you find it? He's up there, of course. Oh. Don't oh, worry, right. he's right up there. Now, where do you live, uh, Rod? 
Well, right now, I'm living in Glendale. Glendale. Right? Yes, I have a little home there with six rooms and, and windows and window shades and uh, Venetian blinds and tables and chairs and spoons and saucers and dishes and rugs and uh, <laughs> knives and forks. Hold it, hold it. Why are you telling me all this? Well, you said that the secret word is something around the house. <laughs> I can't get over how familiar you look. <laughs> Tell me, Doctor, have you ever seen him before? No, but I've treated cases like him. <laughs> Probably use a double couch, don't you? <laughs> now, getting back to you, Rodney. Uh, <laughs> is, the vi is the violin you play a Stradivarius? A stra oh, no, no. You see, I, 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 you have to be rich to be able to have a Stradivarius. See, I'm poor. I... All I have around my house are towels and rugs <laughs> and, and uh, ashtrays. <laughs> Look, enough of that already. Now, Rodney, you say you, you don't have a Stradivarius? No, sir. You know, I heard that a lot of imitation Strads have been made and sold. I know, but they could never fool me because, you see, I, I could tell a phony. I got it! I got it! I got the word! I got the word! I got the word! I got it! I got it! I guess the word. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There's been a mistake. The duck thought you said the secret way, but you didn't. What? Secret way is telephone, and you said telephony. Yeah, but I got an impediment in my speech. I always say that. I say telephony. I say yes, telephony. Well, I shave. I use, I use cologne. I say it all the time. You use cologne when yes, you shave? Yes. Well, in the sentence you use, you said you wouldn't be fooled because you could telephony. Well, you didn't let me finish the sentence. I said I was going to telephony a friend of mine who's a violin expert. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> What's his name, this friend? <laughs> You've got a friend. Well, okay, they say the customer's all right, but I don't know how that applies to you. You sound like the type who's never been a customer. I don't care. Just let me at this duck. There must be more where that came from. Well, there was, but he just flew in from Las Vegas. <laughs> Get back home there and let's start the question. Okay. Hey, hold it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're supposed to divide that money with her. Well, as soon as I get some change, I'll give her $10. <laughs> he told me to divide it. He didn't say how. <laughs> you know, Groucho, I made a mistake before. I never have had a case like him. Hey, all right, I'll give you a half. The people you run into on these programs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but stop whining and let's get on with the questions here. Yeah. You selected the miscellaneous category. Now, which question do you want? Remember, the questions are from $10 to $100. $10 ones are easy, and they get more difficult as you progress. Now, what question do you want to start with? Uh, well, we'll try the $70 one. See, that's a hard one. $70. All right, for $70, what ship now holds the transatlantic speed record? The, uh, the, the steamship United States. Correct, you have $170. <laughs> now, what question will you try now? Uh, <laughs> The $80 one. Or $80. That's even harder. For, well, decide between you. Is that what you want? The $80 one. For $80, what baseball player had the highest lifetime batting average? Uh, Ty Cobb. That's absolutely right. <laughs> God, I'm glad I didn't answer that. I would have said Crazy Legs Hirsch. <laughs> what do you say? Nothing, nothing. All right, you now have $250. How much money do you want to bet on this one? Twenty. Ninety. <laughs> Ninety. All right, for $90, what is the largest living mammal? Well, uh... Uh... We're only betting $20. <laughs> the whale. Right again. For $90. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You said 20 I said nothing. Funny, I could have sworn he said crazy legs hush. <laughs> You're just trying to confuse me, that's all. Believe me, you can't fool me, I can tell a phony. <laughs> You're wasting your neck, big boy. Only once to a contestant. 
All right, now you have $340. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? A hundred dollars. Oh, that's the hardest. All right, for a hundred dollars? Now, here's your last question. What would be the interest on $100,000 held for two and a half years at 4% interest if the interest is compounded semi-annually? $10,408.08. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. It's amazing. How'd you figure it out so fast? Well, you see, I had this same, the same transaction uh, just a couple of days ago with the California bank. <laughs> you borrowed that much money from them? No, they borrowed from me. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. I read it someplace. I don't know. Oh, well, you wind up with $440, which beats our other couples, and that gives you a crack at the jackpot question. Which tonight is worth... <laughs> The big question tonight is $3,000. Now, you have 15 seconds to decide. <laughs> you have 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please don't help me, audience. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there is a famous radio and television comedian who was born in Waukegan, Illinois. Jack Benny! Jack Benny! Jack Benny! Jack Benny! I got it! Jack Benny, I know, Jack Benny. Wait a minute, we know it's Jack Benny, Mr. Forsythe, but that's not the question. What? The question is this. Now listen, this is the question. For many years, this bum has been lying about his age. Now for $3,000... <laughs> $3,000, can you tell me how old he really is? We've <laughs> only got five seconds more. $3,000, what is Jack Benny's real age? 39. I'm sorry, but that's the wrong answer, which means the big question next week will be worth $3,500. Thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth Dale. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rodney. <laughs> hey, hey. Just a minute. I want to talk to you. I thought so. You're Jack Benny, huh? Oh, Groucho. I only came on for a gag and tried to win a couple of dollars. That's all. Jack, I, I, don't, I don't understand. What? Well, you know you're not 39. All you had to do was tell your correct age and you'd have won the jackpot. Why didn't you do it? Groucho, let me tell you something. I may not be a spendthrift, but brother, I know a bargain when I see one. <laughs> bargain? Yeah. Where else can you buy 22 years for only $3,000? <laughs> Thank you, thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, once again, I'd like to bring out my guest, just for a bow, Groucho Marx. I'm sure you that I can spill it. Won't be able to walk tomorrow. Oh, I don't. Now listen, Groucho. You just put a gun in front of me. And I'll show you. Groucho. Yes. You know, I do want to thank you very, very much for being on my show. And listen, I got to tell you something. You know, a couple of weeks ago. When they had the Emmy Awards, you know, for the television shows, I really was surprised and disappointed with your wonderful show that you didn't win an Emmy. Well, what's our opinion against millions? I know, but that's... <laughs> listen, I, you know, anybody that can give away as much money as you do and still tell jokes deserves something. <laughs> Jack, that's an unfortunate subject, you, but since you did bring it up... Uh, yeah. When do I get paid? How about money? Oh, 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 well, Groucho, I wouldn't worry about that because you will get a check tomorrow morning. Mm. Now, how about paying me in cash? <laughs> Why, what's, what's wrong with my check? Well, I can telephone you, too. You know? <laughs> you 
he's a pretty cute guy. You know what's so wonderful? He's older than I am. I think, anyway. <laughs> I, one of the Marx Brothers must be old. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, be sure next Sunday to watch Ann Southern and her wonderful show, and I'll be back again in two weeks where we uh, do a show leaving for New York. Thank you very, very much. On tonight's program are the Sportsman Quartet, Gene Mahoney, Don Duran, and Irene Cadro.